says every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for this Sunday morning celebration. As your word says, while it was still dark, the disciples came to an empty grave. Thank you for the hymn that says, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know that he holds the future. Our life is worth the living just because he lives. Thank you for this worship experience. Help us to see you better today than we did on yesterday. Help us to proclaim your truth, that you are the true and living God, that you have all power in your hands, and that you are the lover of our soul. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Let us worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. For his sake we say amen. 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 Remaining not a stranger to us. He is the pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church on Parker Street. Amen. Amen. Used to be a time we couldn't go to Parker Street even that time. But thank God that time has changed and things are changing. We can say what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on everlasting arms. So he's going to introduce his family. I know he's going to say something about them when he stands. But when we are here, we are praying not only for a word from the Lord, but also praying that our hearts will be lifted. The sunrise service by the preaching of Reverend Michael Miller. We want God to use him in a mighty way. I want you to raise your right hand, point it to the preacher. Say, preach Reverend Miller. Preach, Reverend Miller. preach the word of God. 
Clap your hands for the preacher, amen. The next voice we'll hear after St. Paul Choir will be done under Reverend Michael Miller, pastor of St. Paul Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina. Let the church say amen again. Resurrection is born. The psalm is a good morning. The psalm, you feel like, oh, it's too early. But I'm so glad that Christ got up. Therefore, we can all get up. Give it on to God, our Savior. This early morning service, we just give him the praise. So as I keep getting older and when I step in this sacred pulpit and the sacred desk, I think about all the people. It's truly a blessing to be able to stand even this morning 
to your pastor, the angel of this house. We just thank God for this collaboration between each other. It's been wonderful. And y'all, you know it's going on eight years now. We've been doing this for eight years, and it's just truly one. Brother Peterson, my sister in the ministry, I just thank God for her. She and I have formed a, a, a bond. I, I just tell you, I have to talk to her every week. I have to. It's just like my sister in Christ now. I love her dearly. To St. Paul, y'all just raise your hand. You understand. And I'm going to be calling on y'all so y'all know we're going to stay awake in here tonight. Because <laughs> I know it's early. Quiet, thank you all for coming and singing as you have. Mighty man. Oh, praise be God. I tell you, my mind just drifts so many people. I won't call names. I just, just thank God for the ones that I ran into on my journey. This morning we are blessed to have a, a blessed lesson that God has blessed me with. And I pray God that he will move in your spirit to bless you all. Those who have your Bible, you just open it up to Mark's Gospel, the 16th chapter. Brother Peterson is already basically read it. I just want to brief it again. And in St. Paul, this is what we do. We stand for the reading of the word. And you all don't have to, in my name, that's what y'all gonna do, but we do that at St. Paul. We want to continue to do that. And it reads here, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Simone, had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was great. Y'all say, for it was great. And entering into the sculpture, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not afraid, yet seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And finally, verse 8 says, And they went out quickly and fled from the sculpture, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. You may take your seats. For a topic of such a matter this early morning, I'd like to speak to you all from this time. A trip to the graveyard. A trip to the graveyard. Now, I won't be remiss before I go to prayer. Thank you, Father. You know, I, I'm getting older, but I forget a lot of time. Sister Miller, wave your hand. I know they know you. Michael, stand up and let them see you. This is that baby that was over here. Yeah. Look at that. Mama, wave your hand. All right, Mary. Now I can talk. Y'all know who Mary is. Now, St. Paul, don't, but y'all know who Mary is. Uh, that's part of Mary right there. Amen, y'all. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come back now. We come saying thank you for another day's journey. Lord, you didn't have to do what you've done, but you woke us up this morning, and for that, Lord, we say thank you. Now, Lord, I ask that you move all fear, all doubt, every thought we have in our minds away from us so that we can hear what you have to say through your man, sir. Lord, thank you for waking us up this morning. Lord, thank you for allowing us to come to Mighty Mania Baptist Church. Lord, thank you for the pastor of this church. Lord, thank you for the members of this church. Thank you for St. Paul. Lord, we pray right now that one day church is going to be over. We're going to be in heaven. There won't be no more denominations, but there will be a place called joy. And Lord, I'm asking you right now, move me out of the way. That your word will go forth as a double-edged sword. Can you sit on the left and the right and somebody may cry, I hear, I hear, what must I do to be saved? Amen? And hallelujah to his name. The word 
trip simply means the act of going to a place or returning from a place. Simply a journey. Graveyard, a burial ground sometimes located in or next to a church. And then sometimes, I don't know if y'all ever heard of this before, they have potter's fields. That's when you don't have no place to bury, just put them in a field and they drop it on you and go on. Amen, somebody. Amen. I want to talk Pastor Boyce, about the rising of Jesus on this day. That's why we're here. We don't realize it, but we're here because he got up on that third day. And because he got up, you and I ought to be just grinning all over ourselves. We ought to be so happy, we can't understand it. Because when I think about the side nerve that I got, and if God hadn't given me some, some just mercy and grace, where would I be? And I say God, I didn't say me, I said God. Can't do this. Hello, somebody. Church, how many times have you been to a graveyard? Sometimes the witness, your loved one, or your friend been laid to rest. I hate to say it, I've been there two times this week. Don't want to go back for a while. One of us hating and one at Shoals Creek, way up in Pickens County. And oftentimes, it's sad to say this, St. Paul, mighty man, church, but sometimes we go to that grave spot on that day and never return again. Sometimes it's mama and daddy and we love them almost get in the casket at the church. Oh, y'all can hear me. I'm going to wake somebody up again. But they never return to where they been laid to rest. But I found out something, Pastor Boy. If that person has accepted Christ, they are no longer in the grave. Hello, somebody. Their souls are with Jesus, and the body of the remains are still here in the dirt. But I'm so glad that if we live right, if we give God the praise, if we just give him our heart, we won't have to worry about that because even though my body might be at rest, hey, my mind, my soul, my heart will be in heaven. Amen, sir. I got a story to tell y'all. This is a good story. Some of y'all going to have a fit on it. But that was one time, Pastor Boris, I was a couple of years ago, I was moved upon in the spirit by God to Go over to Rest Haven. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Rest Haven? And he said, I don't want you to go in the daytime. Everybody go in the daytime. I want you to go in a jet black dog. Yeah. So I had to do and follow the master's will. Uh oh, I'm looking at y'all face. Y'all saying, What's wrong with him? God instructed me to go to the graveyard. I, didn't, I couldn't have no flashlight. Woo! And my wife went crazy. Why are you going over there? Why would you do that? I can't imagine you doing it. Don't go over there. And I said, I'm going. I'm going to call your mama now. I said, you can call them all you want to. I'm going. <laughs> well, Mike, you're going to go to that, my son. You're going to. They said, no, mama, I ain't going over there. <laughs> Finally, she convinced him. He said, because he's a word. <laughs> I said, Mike, this is what sometimes the ministry calls for. If you're willing to do what God say, do. We got over the rest Haven. It was dark. Only my car lights was able to see. When I cut the car lights off, I said, Mike, you go on. He said, no, I ain't getting that. <laughs> but I began to do exactly what God told me. I got out my car, and I walked as far as I could until so I couldn't even see the car. I began to look the best I could at grave spots. But what he told me, and it came up this week or last night when I was looking my last day, I looked and he was saying to me, they're not here. If they have accepted you, they're not here. I hope somebody takes what I'm saying right now. They have arisen and they have accepted Christ. They are not here. 
is just a reflection of who they were. Amen, somebody. But in the meantime, about a few minutes later, Daddy! Daddy! I came back out. He said, it's about time you come on. I said, Mike, I had to do what thus says the Lord. You know, people won't go to the graveyard at night. They always go during the daytime. So this lesson reflects upon, my personal experience reflects upon, what I see in this text this morning. Yes, yes. Can you imagine these same ladies had the same thoughts that Sister Miller had because it's kind of a little scary to go to the graveyard when it's dark. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, I don't know about y'all, Pastor Boys, but, but sometimes folks think that somebody's going to come up out the grave. Yes. But, but I promise you, once they die, they're not coming back up. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. But it's something about the nature of it. I don't want, I love mama, but I don't want her to come back up. Not now. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. There are three things I want to briefly, and I, I'm going to move on and let y'all get on and get your, your breakfast on. But look at verse 1 and 2. And when the Sabbath was passed, they had a ceremony, the Jews had a ceremony. And when it had passed, I observed Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, that's why y'all here this morning. How many believe in the word of God? Amen. See, you are here. I used to come here all the time when I was a child. Growing up, mom and used to have us come in here. Didn't understand all oh, why you're in church, but you had to be here. Lucius Brown would be on his knees praying, and I'd be saying, Lord, please, Lord, please let him. I know he got to pray, but Lord, please hurry up and let him get through. Some of y'all in here know exactly what I'm talking about. Lord, we had to pray, sir. We had, woo, it was my sir. I was young then. Oh, mom, he got to pray all that time. Man. My sport, that's how it was back in those days. But look what it says here. And very early, Miss Iris, in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sculpture at the rising of the sun. Did I change that word? At the tomb. They came to the grave tomb. Yeah. Amen, somebody. And the first thing I want to mention to somebody here, we're going to see when faith is displayed. Can y'all believe that these ladies, just like I went over to West Haven, they had one thing, they watched him being crucified. And now, they had something on the, in their heart. Now, they were scared. Anybody been scared that you had to go on anyway? Yeah. Oh, let me help y'all. Let me break that down for you. Mama, Mama Lee told me not to come out that yard. We had uh, hedge bushes. Don't come out that yard. But as soon as she turned her back, as soon as she looked like she was back in the back, here I come up to my screen. I'm scared, but I'm going on anyway. I wonder how many of y'all this morning was looking around in your car when you got ready to come to Mighty Man this morning because you're thinking, scared that somebody's going to hit you in the head. But the ladies, that's exactly what they were doing. Sister Brother Peterson, they had a task. They were going to be faithful and they were going to do all they could do to bless their Savior. Amen, somebody. I wonder how many of us in here we're willing to bless the Savior this morning. I wonder how many here will take your shoes off and let God have his way. I wonder how many here realize that God woke you up this morning. It wasn't you that woke yourself up. I wonder how many of y'all know that somebody's in the hospital right now and it's not you. Amen, somebody. I wonder how many realize that there's somebody after you don't even know that he in this world. But yet still, God has blessed you with all your ailments, with all your pills that you have taken this month. You still in the land of the living. I can't get a witness on that, but I know I'll take mine. And I'm so glad that God has spared me another time. They brought sweet spices. That's what they did. It was embalming stuff, but it made it smell good because the bodies, you know, after they began to decompose, they had to put something on. Just like they do now when we embalm somebody. You can't live out too long. You got to embalm them. I just witnessed this this week. 
because I, one of our members passed it. It's a tough thing when you got to see a family member, a church member, friend, been rolled up and put on the gurney and carried out of the house for the last time. Amen. I'm going to try to make this thing real for us today. Look what happens. They said we got to do it. Mary Magdalene, one and some scholars say that she was a former prostitute. Others say, no, that's a bad mark on her. But look what Jesus does. He'll take anybody. No so matter what you have done in your life, God is able to fix it up. See, I want somebody here to know this morning, since you came early this morning, because he lived, you can face tomorrow. Mm. Watch this. Salome, that's the one. She, she was another one, James and, and, and John's mother. And oftentimes, because she was the mother of those two brothers, she wanted to carry herself and walk right. Ooh. Can I go there for a minute, y'all? Sometimes, parents, you have to be able to stand tall because once your child is doing what's right, you need to stand and do what's right so that they can stay and be proud of what they're trying to do. But now if you're running all over town and they're trying to do right, it will discourage them. So look what she does. She is faithful to her Lord. It's dark. I want y'all to see that. See, the light's coming up now. It's dark. But yet still, they have a task to do. And Michael, when you have a task to do, when God has called you to do something, you do it if nobody else will. See, sometimes we, we want to see what Jan, John is doing and what Sarah Sue is doing, and then we'll do it. God didn't call you because when he called you home, it ain't going to be Jan and John, it's going to be you. Amen. Amen, somebody. Stop waiting on somebody else to, to be blessed so that you can be blessed. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. God is looking for you to do your part. Look what happens here, y'all. The first thing we're going to see faith from Peter, said, you see it very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the tomb at the rising of the sun. Somebody don't realize this, but every time you are blessed to wake up to see the sun, you ought to think how blessed you are. Somebody ain't raising your hand, somebody ain't clapping your hand, somebody don't, don't really care. But let me tell you, if you wake up and you see the sunlight, you ought to say, Lord, thank you. I realize I'm getting, getting a little bit older now, and every time I wake up and I can move my leg, even though it's hurt, I can move that one, I can touch my fingers, see my fingers moving, I'm blessed. I mean, really blessed. And because he lives, I can face the bar. Watch this, Rob Peterson. It says very early. On the first day, on Friday, which was a good Friday, they saw him die. They saw him buried in a tomb. They saw the Roman soldiers on the rock where they pushed the rock into the tomb. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God specializes in things that seems so impossible. Aren't you glad because some of us have had some stones in our lives and he has moved that stone away from you? Aren't you glad that was a time in 1966 you wouldn't speak to somebody, but now 2017, you said, I'll do, I'll give him the last glass of water? Oh, y'all don't hear me again. Somebody still, somebody's still mad about 1966. Somebody still can't let it go. And don't realize if it had not been for God on your side. Where would you be? How are you going to not forgive somebody when he forgave you and you're expecting him to forgive you? So these ladies, they go to the tomb. They don't know what's going to happen because what they saw, think about that, they saw that the stone was rolled of, on fire and it was rolled up to the stone, the tomb. And now, they got to go. Can y'all imagine going somewhere and not knowing where you're going and how you're going to get there? And when you get there, you know already what you see in your eyesight. You know ain't no way you're going to be able to get inside. But faith will do some things that you can't do. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. See, sometimes the church, Pastor Boyd, scares us because if it's not going what we think it ought to go, or what we see, we'll give up. We'll give up and we'll quit. Stop, stop quitting on the Lord's house. Stop quitting on people because God is the author and finisher of our faith. 
Amen, somebody. Look what they said they got to do. They got from Peter to go to the, the tomb and they got to anoint his body. They don't know how it's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen, but I got to go. That's why I had to go, Sister Miller. I'll tell you that. I had to go out to Rest Haven. I'm scared too. But I had to go. No matter what it took, if that was going to be the last day I said when I accepted Christ over here at my manor, when I accepted the call of going to the ministry, Lord, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Just so because I didn't know it was going to be going to Rest Haven. Now, I've been to Rest Haven many times, but I didn't know it was going to be at night. But I got a witness that my son was right there. And after a little while, he said, Daddy, come on. I thought it was about right. Come on, I'm back there. I was around there, Sister Mary was coming the way around there where my grandma was, and I said, Grandma, it's good to see you, but I got to go. But then look at the text, y'all. And they said among themselves, Who? Now listen, can you imagine them walking? They're trying to get that pastor boys. But they ain't conversation. You know how we get on the telephone, or uh, the telephone. And we talk about what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Amen, somebody. And then one speaks up and says, well, you don't have to go, but I'm going. And because that one says, I'm going, it makes you say, well, if they're going, I'm going. Amen, somebody. And they got their heads down, Reverend Peter. And it's dark. They're trying to get up and go to the tomb, the graveyard. But on this trip, they, they get to ask the question, who? How are we going to get that stone away from that tomb? Now that's a dilemma. Somebody in here today, this day, you didn't have a good day yesterday. And you didn't know how you were going to be able to make it this morning to my night, but you said, I'm going. I don't care what it takes, I'm going to be there. Now you don't know how you're going to make it, you don't know how your, your side and nerve going to feel, but you're going to go ahead anyway. Anybody been there besides me? And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the tomb? And when they, see, that's why I want y'all to hear this. If you do it God's way, if you do it God's way, church, if you do it God's way, church, even when you don't even see the finish line, even if you can't see how you're going to work it out, God is already working it out when you work, you're trying to figure it out. Amen, somebody. Do y'all you know, know that God already goes before you? He goes before you ever even start, before I ever start. He's already in the midst of it. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. When you, when you know, when you have that falling out, you know, teeth and tongue do fall out sometimes. Hello, somebody. And sometimes, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Some of us have some alts against each other. And we still struggle with them, even though we in church. Woo! And sometimes, the Holy Spirit, you asking God, God, what will you just help me? Let me go and say, I'm, I'm sorry. But the old stone that's in your heart and in your flesh and in your spirit, it'll cause you to say, mm, I didn't do that, I ain't doing that. Oh, I'm talking to you. That's why it's real quiet in here. I'm glad it's real quiet. Look at this, y'all. They question themselves, who is going to move and move the stone from the tomb? But then they looked and saw the stone. They were far off, but they see the stone. And the stone had been removed. What am I trying to tell somebody here? What the scripture is trying to tell you? If you press towards the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus, he'll move the stuff that you can't move. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Let me say it again. If you are still contemplating some stuff that's on the inside of you that you hadn't, you know you still got it. Amen, somebody. And you know that it needs to be removed, but you hadn't touched it yet. But you want it removed. You know God will already remove that thing if you just step up and walk out on faith. Yes. Amen, somebody. I don't want to go there, but I will. You know, somebody need a glass of water, but you said, I doubt it the last but I get some water too. But God can move in your heart. Make you change what you said you would want to do. A lot of folks say never, but I don't believe a human being can say never. Because when you say never, that's the very time you have to go do it. Amen, somebody. I'm so glad when I looked at this with Pastor Boyd, 
And I see here, I see something here. When you have low expectations, do y'all know what I mean by low expectations? When you don't expect them to come to Mighty Man this morning, we're going to have a little service. Mike Miller going to get up there and run and walk a little bit. And then we're going to go on and then we're going to have the second service. And then we're going to be out of here if I can go play golf. Or I can go cook my meal. Let me help y'all with something. When you walk in the house, when you walk on the grounds of the house of God, you don't know what's going to happen. We just had a lady in Bible study collapse. We were getting ready to pray a blood prayer and we just hear a thump. We had it happen twice. Let me tell y'all something. You don't know what's going to happen from now until the time that the next service is going to We don't know if we're going to make it to that time. But if you're in here now, you ought to give God the praise because He didn't have to wake you up. Amen. I'm so glad I got my mama here in these lot of years. Mama still. Here and had the gumption, had the nerve. I'm going. Remind me of these three women. Regardless of the fact, I'm feeling not the best, but I'm going. I don't know if it'll be my last time. I'm going. And somebody in here saying, I wish you hurry up. Do you know you're going to get to a point in your life where it might be your last time, and it might be our last time anytime. When you start getting a little bit older, Walking down this aisle is not as easy as it used to be. Oh, praise God, somebody. But because of low expectations, if you expect low, you'll get low. But if you expect high, you'll get high. See, I believe that, that Miss Annabelle, she's not in here right now, but God oh, when she's saying, get it right. I can remember how I must have felt and as a child. I didn't understand Sister Marley, but I was still saying, ooh, that's, ooh what, that sounds good. Why, why are they doing that? But by and by, when the morning comes, you begin to understand it better. By and by. I'm so glad that these ladies could see that they was going to press their way, even though Pastor Boyd couldn't see the end result. But, but Sister Amy, and because they looked and saw that the storm was rolled away, for it was very great. Can y'all imagine how they must have felt? Didn't know what was going to happen, but when they got there, they could see that the storm, oh Lord, y'all don't hear me in here. Have you ever had a problem in your life? And, and, and you know, when you went to bed, it was still a problem, but when you woke up, God had moved a stone that you had in your life away. Y'all ever heard this before? That same issue that you had, that bill that you had. Amen, somebody. And then they caught Oh, y'all forgot. Oh, J.P. Steve, y'all forgot about J.P. Steve. Right? <laughs> Knocking on your door. Mary, you get, I, I got to have that money. The insurance man, independent insurance. Oh, y'all don't know the independent insurance. Do you? They knock on your door. You won't have not another dime. You remember the time you had to feed five children and didn't have enough to feed? But I remember mom needs to make this whole cake and to spread it and make it work. Do you know God has made it work in your life and you don't even see how he has made it work? Him, Green Line, Greg and I made it through. And it wasn't by how good I was. It was God's mercy and His grace. It was so good. And somebody I bought the street. You didn't make it on your own. It was because God's grace allowed you to make it through. I'm so glad when I look at the text and I see in verse 4 when they looked. Oh, so many times I repeat, I looked and I saw so many stones in my life. Miss Lewis, I saw some of the stones being rolled away, and I know for a fact without a doubt that was a great thing for me. Then, Pastor Boys, I like this right here. Now, in Mark, this is not the gospel. They didn't get an invitation, they just walked in. Lord have mercy. But in another not the gospel, which is Matthew, they was invited in. I'm so glad that the stone was removed away so that we can allow God to come in. How many in here this morning want God to come into your life? I know you think you got it. I always thought I had it too. But, but when I had this open heart, sir, he had to take my heart out. He had to fix it up. Made me sit at home for a while. I didn't like sitting. I don't like sitting now. But I had to sit and let God talk to me. And I couldn't move around. But because he lives, God can 
came to fix this stuff for me. He said, little you not love the people like you ought to. Little you not tear it like that. I said, Lord, I think I am. He said, no, you're not. So when I came back to St. Paul, and y'all say, Pastor, you're just running too much. I'm running for my life. And everybody asked me, just tell me I'm running for my life. When I realized that I was dead, and God said, I'm going to give you another chance. And then I looked at the text where the stone was removed. Yes, sir. He invited me in to see he had more work for me to do. And St. Paul, I, I tried to do the very best that I can. When I looked in, I began to see somebody on the right hand side telling me, don't be scared. Do y'all know so many folks are scared to really give God their heart? Because somebody has hurt them in the past and they don't want to give their heart up because the heart is the central part of our lives. But I'm so glad that God allowed me to go through a heart surgery so he could fix my heart right. That no matter what you may be, I can love you still. That's why I believe that God got up from the grave. That's why I believe that you once was dead, but God woke you up. That's why I thank God that I don't dance on the dance floor no more. But I do the funk in the pulpit. I'm so glad that God fixed it up for me. That I don't have to be worried about what they say, them saying, how I'm going to do this and what they're going to say if I do that. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I wonder how many in here believe that God is a way maker. He made a way for me and for you. Even if you ain't saying a word in here right now, he made a way for you. He rolled a stone back. He sent somebody in white clothing and said, look for your father there because, you know, sometimes we have to see before we believe. We have to touch before we believe. But he said, look where he laid. He said, now go tell the disciples and Peter, oh God and Peter, go tell him that I'm not dead. I'll meet him over in Galilee. And show now God, if you trust God, God will, uh, I said God will, he'll, uh, he'll make a way uh, out of nowhere. I'll come here, Daddy Town. I'll come get up, Daddy. But I just remember just a couple of months ago, he had a stroke, uh, but God didn't let him leave here. God won't give him up, uh, gave him a pen, uh, and now that he is uh, doing the same thing he was doing. I know he was doing a good service, uh, but God said, I want to show you some more stuff. I want to show you where you can go. So sometimes you have to go through some pain to get where you want to be. Aren't you glad that he arose? Aren't you glad he's not in the tomb? Aren't you glad that they go over in, in, in the Middle East to try to find what Jesus is laying you can't find him? I'm so glad that if I die one day, when I die one day, he's going to say, well done. I wonder how many here can really say, I can't wait for him to say, well done. I can't wait for him to say, well done. I wonder how many here and saying to yourself, well, I don't know, but he might say, depart from me. I knew you're not. There's a whole lot of us. We'll come to church religiously, but we won't do it God's way. When God says, if you do it my way, seek me first, the kingdom, and my righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you. I don't understand why we can't catch that promise yet. But Pastor Boy, that's a promise. If I seek him first and his righteousness, everything is going to be added unto me. Amen, somebody. So these ladies, Reverend Peterson, they was on a graveyard trip. And they went to the trip of the graveyard to anoint Jesus' body. I'm so glad that you came out this morning. You didn't have to anoint his body, but he came to bless you when you let him in to your heart. When we get ready to leave here today, 
Somebody ought to have a clean heart, a new heart, because the stone had been told to, to be rolled away. 1966 is gone and it'll never come back again. You in 2017 and you ought to give God everything you got. Because he's been just that good to you and me that I can't say enough. Tom's are not enough to tell you how good he's been. How you been good, y'all? How you been good, y'all? Hey, did he get up in your life? Is he resurrected, y'all? I wonder if anybody's willing to stand and not be scared to stand and give God the praise because he rose. But somebody's scared to stand because you're scared what people are going to say. Are you willing to stand and tell somebody, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me? I don't know how many in here today are scared of the Lord, but I'm not scared of what people are going to say. God's been that step good to me. And I'm willing to tell everybody, anybody, because he did it. I will do it. Amen.